So you're about to get married. Saturday, that's fantastic. And where are you going to get married, please? Uh, Dunkin' Dunkin' Donuts, did you say? <laughs> Sorry? I know that some people in this city, they have to get married on a budget, times are hard, but really, if you have to get your wedding done in Dunkin' Donuts, surely you could get Krispy Kreme, surely. Are you getting married, Alan? Not yet, a few more years to go? Okay, awesome. So this is your father, and this is your mother. Your grandmother, you look young enough to be his mother. That's my pleasure. I'm very charming, aren't I? <laughs> you can now get your hair cut in Walmart. <laughs> when I was a kid, Alan, that's what I'd say if another kid was in my school and they, they came in one day with a slightly shitty haircut. That's what I'd say. Yeah. You get your haircut in Walmart. <laughs> you can't say that in your school, Alan. You can't. You couldn't get away with it. You couldn't these days. The kids today cannot say that. You get your haircut in Walmart. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Your mama cut my hair in Walmart. And I can't believe it is somebody's job in Walmart to stand by the door when I walk in, and this is all they have to do to earn a living wage. They look at me when I walk in, and this is it. This is a, this is a job in America. They look at me when I walk in, and, and this is all they have to do. They go, they go, hello. <laughs> it's a job in America, hello. <laughs> and they don't do it right either. If you're going to put someone on the door to make me feel welcome, put somebody attractive on the door. Don't put somebody on the door who weighs 800 pounds and has a wonky eye. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Walmart. <laughs> the one in Louisville, I couldn't believe this today, she had a badge, the badge said, in training. <laughs> How could you possibly fuck that job up? <laughs> And then I went to another supermarket because I got fed up with Walmart. I went to Kruger's. You know Kruger's? I'm sorry? I think one or two of you might be forgetting who it is who invented the language. <laughs> What's that thing in your ear, sir? Oh, it's a phone. God, I thought you were a suicide bomber for a second. <laughs> no, I saw it flashing in a couple of times. I was about to, you know... I thought, you know, Al-Qaeda, they come in all forms these days, you've got to check. <laughs> when I checked into my hotel, the woman who checked me in, she said to me, I love the way you speak. I said, thank you, thank you, why is that? She said, because you sound just like the lizard. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that, please? <laughs> say, say it again, say it again. The guy cool is it? Ladies and gentlemen, we have spotted a redneck motherfucker. We have! We found one! I love the way you speak, sir. I love the way you speak. Hey, the guy cool is it? I love it! Hey, go on again, the guy cool is it? <laughs> no, I've seen the Dukes of Hazard, ladies and gentlemen. We get the Dukes of Hazard on cable. I just didn't know people really spoke like that. It's wonderful. <laughs> I need to find out more about you, please, sir. What? <laughs> Uh, what is your name, please? Uh, Stefan. Stefan. Um, <laughs> Stefan, can you tell me what? what I'm going to speak your language for you here. Ming Hong, when when do you do for a living? So what do you do? Let me take a guess. What I can guess what he does for a living. I can guess. Hang on. Let me see. Let me see if I've got it right. Okay. Hello. Am I right? Have I got it? <laughs> Have I got it? Have I? <laughs> I'm sorry, Stefan. I'm sorry. I'm so rude. <laughs> How's the popcorn? Is it good? <laughs> so sorry, Stefan. What it... All right, calm down. I don't want you having a heart attack on me, please, Stefan. Mind you, if you do, we've got a nurse here, so go for it. Knock yourself out. Now, Stefan, what, what do you really do for a living, please? <laughs> it was quite a simple question, I thought. I gave you plenty of time to think. Come on, Stefan, share with the group, please. As a soldier? <laughs> wow. That would scare those fuckers in Iraq so much, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it? 
Sorry, I don't mean to swear so much, but you know, if you're in the Iraqi and you're in the Taliban and you're there doing your thing and suddenly, you know, suddenly an American soldier in front of you, you can be scared enough, but suddenly he opens his mouth and he's like, it's going to fuck you up. It would piss me, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share something with you now. Please don't judge me on this story. Uh, I mentioned earlier I was in New York, didn't I, sir? I did mention I was in New York. Now, while I was there, I went to a recording of um, the Maury Povich show. <laughs> I wasn't a guest. I wasn't a guest. I was, I was sitting in the studio audience, because we get it in England, and I love it, right? There's one type of show I love. I love it when they get wild teenage girls. Have you seen this one, Alan? And they send them to... <laughs> They send them off to the boot camp. Have you seen that? They send them to boot camp. To if you haven't seen it, I will, I will summarize the show for you because it's always the same. What happens is the parents, they come out first of all and they're very upset. They're going, Maury, we can't cope. She's only 16. She's already slept with 100 men. <laughs> Last year, she smoked crack at grandma's funeral. <laughs> Please help Maury send our little bitch to boot camp. <laughs> So then the girl comes out. This is the next part of the show, always the same. Girl comes out and the whole crowd, they go, they start booing her, they boo her. And I wanted to be in the crowd and be a part of that. It looks like so much fun. Well, we've heard what she's like. Come on out, let's meet her. Come on, Tiffany. Boo! Because that gets Tiffany really pissed. She's like, Bleh! That's the boot camp show. I don't think when you've flown 4,000 miles, madam, that's asking too much for a little bit of wild teens and boot camp. Would you agree? But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the day I showed up, they weren't doing wild teens go to boot camp. No. Have a guess, anybody, what they were doing when I showed up at Maury Povich. Anybody? Baby, Baby daddy. daddy. <laughs> Have you met Stefan? <laughs> My God almighty, do you know what, the way you speak, Stefan, and whatever you do, it actually is the closest thing. If a banjo could speak, <laughs> that's how it would sound. That's how, <laughs> to my ears. Were they doing, what was it? Who's my daddy? I think that's the show you were getting at. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if they were doing Who's My Daddy when I showed up at Maury Povich, I would not be standing up here bitching about it. I like that too. That would have been my second choice. I like that show. When it comes to three-year-old Shaniqua. <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> I told you, you a hoe, you a hoe, you a hoe. No, they weren't doing that either, no. The day I showed up at Maury Povich, that's the day they thought it'd be a good idea to do a makeover, a makeover show. <laughs> yeah. One woman for an hour. Maury, I can't get a boyfriend. Can you get someone to put makeup on my face? <laughs> I couldn't believe they were gonna put that shit on television. <laughs> and this woman, this woman wasn't ugly. She didn't even need a makeover. She was just a little bit, little bit overweight. She needed to exercise and eat sensibly. I was on my feet screaming, Save! 